Good afternoon to one and all present here. I, Amrita Prakash, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science, welcome you all to the technical session of the International Conference on Empowering Smart Future through Scientific Development and Technology, co-sponsored and co-chaired by Moltonet Switzerland, co-hosted and co-sponsored by USDAT USA Europe Data Analysis Congress Series, organized by the Research Committee and Department of Computer Applications, MCA, Patna Women's College. This technical session has two rooms. For first room, the session is chaired by Dr. Sobha Srivastav, ma'am, Associate Professor and Head, Department of Zoology, Patna Women's College. Madam is a member secretary of Academic Council of Patna Women's College and also members of several committees of our college. She has done her PhD from Patna University, Patna, and participated in many national and international seminars and webinars. She had published several research papers in reputed national and international journals. Presently, she is supervising four research scholars of the Department of Zoology, Patna University, Patna. I welcome you, ma'am. For the room two, the session is shared by Dr. Rakesh Kumar Singh, Head, Nanotechnology Center and Registrar of Aryabhat Knowledge University, Patna, Bihar. Sir had started his teaching and research career from 2004 from Patna Women's College itself. He has guided 15 research, uh, 15 PhD research scholars 30 MTech students and 39 undergraduate students in multidisciplinary area of nanoscience and nanotechnology and physics. Most importantly, Sir has established six world-class nanotechnology research laboratories as professor in charge, which was also appreciated by Honorable Chief Minister Sri Nitish Kumarji. He has guided and worked in total 18 UGC and other government-sponsored research projects. Dr. Rakesh has been awarded many times. Recently, Sir has been awarded with Chancellor Award of Best Young Teacher with contributions in modern field of nanoscience for his outstanding performance on 23rd November 2021. Sir has developed more than 200 low or no cost science experiment under the guidance of eminent academicians Panshri, Professor H.C. Verma, sir. As Anveshika activities, sir has delivered more than 200 lectures, presentations, and also appointed as Master Resource Person of International Year of Physics. We are very delighted to have you, sir. The rapporteurs for the technical session for Room 1 and Room 2 is Ms. Shushmita Chakravarti, Assistant Professor, Department of MCA, and Ms. Poonam Lakra, Assistant Professor, Department of MCA, respectively. Before we start the session, an important announcement for all the uh, participants, paper presenters, and session chairpersons join their respective class uh, rooms. There is a breakout option in the Zoom panel. If you have joined through your laptop, there is a breakout option beside the record button, just click on that breakout room and select your room. There is only two rooms, room one and room two. Room two paper presenters will stay in this room and just room two participants and paper presenters, please join. I request Rakesh sir also to please join room two.
now i hand over the session to shobha ma'am over to you ma'am thank you so much amrita good afternoon and a warm welcome to one and all present in this virtual international conference on empowering smart future through scientific development and technology there are 11 paper presenters in this session the time line has been given to all the participants please stick to your time 8 minutes for the presentation and 2 minutes for question and answers the audience may ask the question which are relevant to the topic uh, presented in the chat box so let's begin the session all the best to all the presenters first of all i request the first presenter dr manish kumar to present his paper dr manish kumar yes ma'am please share your screen okay dr manish kumar Dr Manish Kumar are you there Dr. Manish Kumar is not there. So, screen pe to he is visible, but he is not responding. He has joined uh, the session, but he is not responding. Hmm. Anyone from that uh, group? Because many of them are there. Miss Lovely Kumari. Miss Lovely Kumari. Yes, ma'am. Miss Lovely Kumari. If you are there, Lovely ko link de diye. Wo Lovely kar rahi hai mere saath. So, lovely Kumari, please share your screen. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And start your presentation. Lovely Kumari, please unmute yourself. Yes, ma'am. I can't share my screen, actually. So you are using your laptop or your mobile phone? Mobile phone. Okay. now your screen visible. is visible ha uh, your screen is visible you are audible so please begin your presentation okay ma'am okay, good afternoon all of you i am lovely kumari i am going to present my presentation uh, my topic is regarding computational innovation of p23 pro jbd dopain part of chikungunya virus using chikungunya virus also introduce other contributors in this project dr ganesh chandra sahu scientist e icmr rmri rms research associate dr manish kumar and other my follower contributors let us start to the part of introduction uh, what is the chikungunya virus chikungunya virus uh, is the rna based virus with a positive single stranded gene it's about genome size about 11.6 kb and it is the member of alpha virus genus and toga virid family and uh, then the uh, this disease was first identified in 1950 in tanzania since 2004 chikungunya has uh, spread rapidly and been identified over the 60 countries throughout the asia africa europe and americans now comes to the part of chikungunya fever it is the arthrogenic aboriginal infection caused by the chikungunya virus and it is uh, transmitted by the bite of the female aedes species and chikungunya virus poses three structure and four non structure like in this the picture uh, blue part is the protease domain and the red part is the zinc binding domain and the yellow part is the macro domain and the uh, light blue part is the anti light domain 
बट एन एस टू पी एंड एन एस टू पी थ्री पार्टिसिपेट द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ फोर क्रोशियल डोमेन सच इज प्रोटीन एमटी लाइक माइक्रो एंड जेबीडी फर्स्ट ऑफ वॉट इज द डोमेन डोमेन आर दिस्टिंग फंक्शनल एंड स्ट्रक्चर यूनिट इन अ प्रोटीन एंड प्रोटीन डोमेन इज द रीजन ऑफ द पॉलिपेप्टाइड चेन डेट इज the protein's role of the ns2 to critical and virus replication is only the virus protease activity is used for the processing of the viral non structured polypeptide and second one is the methyl transferase like domain of chikungunya nsp2 virus then comes to the micro domain micro domain is the part of nsp3 is the highly conserved among the alpha virus and adp ribosyl hydro uh, hydro uh rilase activity of chikungunya virus nsp3 md it is a critical of chikungunya viral is application viral on no small molecules drug targeting chikungunya sp3 have been identified till the date now comes to the aim to identify novel chemotherapeutic agents against the chikungunya infection and this is my the material and methods for gua pdv retire from the Uh, RCSB data bank. It is the main part of uh, my docking part for GUA PDV retired, and then comes to the basilin, and is derived from the taken from PubChem server, and it is the part of flavonoids which uh, secondary metabolites. And I am using the docking docking software is the Discovery Studio version three point five. Now comes to the result and conclusion. A structure validation is the ERA eighty seven. A thousand four hundred eighty year overall mo model quantity and pro check ninety three point one percent residue in the favor regions and the pro set Z score eleven point seven two reveal the reliability of the proposed model and then the docking result is a bracelin seven o beta D gluconide a uh, one of the derivatives of bracelin has a sold in the highest live dog score with one twenty three point six one. and amino acid involved in the poly uh, protein ligand interaction valerine 13.66 or uh, 16 1367 alanine 1401 glycine 1403 serine 1443 and thionine 1463 residues and comes to the conclusion lack of the specific chemotherapy against chikungunya virus infection bristlin and derivatives of bristlin 7 o beta d glucuro night might be possible noble precis targeted antiviral treatment and it is the need to be validations thank you so much any question now very uh, relevant presentation chikungunya is a viral infection transmitted by mosquitoes so it is found worldwide there is currently no vaccine to prevent uh, or medicine to treat chikungunya virus infection so this research aims to explore some drugs that effectively inhibit the replicative mechanism of chikungunya during infection and control the spread of this disease so very nice presentation any questions from the audience anyone or the part participants or the audience you may ask questions so there are no questions in the chicken uh, chat box so let's proceed now i request the next presenter dr rashmi komal to present her paper dr rashmi komal thank you ma'am thank you so you may share your screen is the is my screen shared ma'am is my screen shared ma'am yes ma'am yes yes you are uh, visible okay screen is visible yes okay thank you ma'am so So I am Rashmi Komal 
from uh, Patna Science College. And uh, today I shall uh, present my work, my project book, uh, which is in micropropagation of banana cultivar for sustainable agriculture. And uh, this project has been uh, completed for uh, uh, goal nowadays, we know that sustainable development goal, one of the goal is sustainable agriculture. And in sustainable agriculture, we have to provide ample food for the mankind and ample fiber for the mankind through agricultural developments. And my co-author is uh, Dr. Ranjit Mari, who is assistant professor in plant breeding and genetics from Nalanda College of Horticulture. So, uh, okay. So, um, why banana? Banana Musa paradisica is the second premium fruit crops in India after mango and it is the fourth most important food crops in the world and uh, it is nutritionally also very important and uh, it is very good in taste but uh, why Musa paradisica AAB variety? Because Musa paradisica AAB variety is the Malvo banana which is on the verge of extinction in uh, uh, India and uh, most of the other places also. So some works has been tried and a protocol has been established to develop this uh, Musa Paradisica Malibu banana for uh, uh, doing tissue culture and for sustainable agriculture. And uh, why Musa Paradisica AAB has been selected because uh, India is the leading country in banana production and uh, India cannot export enough bananas due to its short self life. This is the main fault. Uh, this is the demerit in uh, banana, Malvo banana, that it has a very short self life. And so uh, it cannot be exported. And the only way through which it can be expo exported is through plant tissue culture. We can uh, prepare ample of uh, tissue culture materials or uh, uh, artificial seeds through plant tissue culture and then we can export it in India and abroad and everywhere. Among different cultivars of banana, Malvo holds a coveted position in the world for its taste, sweetness, aroma and nutrition. And it has good shelf life also as compared to the other cultivars of banana. Since this crop is of immense economic importance, much work has to be done for its maintenance, conservation and in vitro propagation. Why micropropagation? Why not uh, general propagation? Because the multiplication technique through plant tissue culture provides disease free planting materials. Large scale production or micropropagation of quality produce is the only way to fulfill the demands of the farmers. That uh, demand and supply ratio, when it goes uneven, then we have to do micropropagation or through plant tissue culture, we can meet the demand and supply ratio or uh, make it even. It also promotes the production of large number of plantlets within a defined time frame. And uh, methodology. What are the methodology? You can see my tissue culture lab, which has got so many uh, culture vessels, culture tubes. In methodology, in sort, we can say as the other, all the types of different tissue culture uh, protocols, uh, sucker is selected as the X plant. Here, in different uh, plants, uh, no DI uh, soup tips has been selected. Here, in Malvo banana, we use suckers and then 2%, 0.2% ascorbic acid, 0.4% citric acid, biostein, streptomycin sulfate. These have been used for surface sterilization of the explants. There are other things also, just say uh, magnesium uh, MG, HgCl2 has been also used for surface sterilization. Then uh, the explants has to be ranged and then apical meristems from that selected nodes has been taken after removing two or three leaves, outer leaves of the plant, um, explant, and then it is inoculated in MS uh, media. The best result that we got was in MS uh, Murashige's Foods medium, which is supplemented with IAA and BAP in different combinations and different cons concentrations in so many different types of vessels and culture tubes. You can also see some of this. You can also see 
some of this uh, culture tubes and vessels in the laboratory uh, in which these uh, cul um, tissue culture protocols have been uh, started and done. Then we can see this. Uh, this, this is a This, you can see uh, that uh, this is how the entire work has to be done. This is the mother plant and from mother plant, uh, mother plant form has been selected and then initiation has been done. And in initiation, just we develop some types of callus cultures and then we do the um, um, uh, shooting part and then rooting part and some primary hiding has been done and then secondary hardening has been done and then this is the way the tissue culture protocol moves around and I'll show some of the photographs which will show which has been developed in our laboratory. Uh, this is the just establishment of the culture uh, and uh, this is the uh, figure B. This shows that uh, the culture has been uh, it's showing some growth in the nodal explants and here you can see the leaf coming out from this uh, established culture and the last figure it shows there are multiple shoots being regenerated from the uh, explants which has been inoculated uh, this is the picture which shows here uh, that multiple roots have been regenerated and rooting has been done in uh, uh, media that is half strength MS media has been done for uh, used for rooting with uh, a little concentration of NAA that is 1 mg per liter NAA has been used for rooting purposes and here you can see these planting materials have been separated different suits have been separated after being rooted and this primary hardening has been done. Then you can see these hardening or acclimatization. This you can see here you can see the plantlets transferred to the earthen pots containing sterilized soil and farmyard manure and uh, in a ratio of 1 is to 1. These are the acclimatized plants which has been done through a long process of 2 to 2.5 uh, months. And here you can see this uh, picture is from the uh, Agriculture University, that is Horticultural uh, um, Department of, in uh, Nalanda. That is Noor Sarai. And here you can see the ample of plants which is being field trial. These plants have been used for field trial and we have successfully been able to get the plants here. Yeah, this protocol has been established. If uh, I have completed, yeah, we have completed this project, then what are the outcomes of this project? What are the outcomes? So outcomes of this project is that the present study, uh, the present study reveals an efficient and reproducible protocol for multiple shoot regeneration from swollen base node of Malbo banana cultivar AAB, which may be used further for development of large number of Malbo banana plantlets of desired genotype. And the other uh, outcome is that conventional methods of propagation needs to be augmented with modern breeding techniques like plant tissue culture for sustainable agriculture. And this you can see, this is the Monday in which uh, the people are selling uh, banana, they have collected the bananas and in Monday they sell. This picture just shows, this defines how important and how useful this fruit is for us. And uh, Bihar being one of the uh, largest uh, producers of this uh, um, uh, plant banana, in which Malbo banana is also one of the cultivars which is grown on a large scale. But since uh, lack of uh, its uh, availability of the genotypes and all those, it is uh, it has been born on the verge of extinction since last 10 to 15, uh, since last decade or 10 to 15 years. And this is all what banana is about. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Rashmi, for such an informative pre presentation. Uh, bananas are a good source of several vitamins and minerals. 
especially potassium, vitamin B6 and vitamin 6, uh, vitamin C. Yeah. Cultivated bananas are almost always seedless and hence sterile. So they need to be propagated vegetatively. This micropropagation protocol may help the development of large number of Malbhog banana plantlets of desired gen genotype. So very good presentation. Any questions from the audience? Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, can we just uh, give a detail uh, in which you did the uh, propagation of the shoot, medium, the medium composition of the shoot? Okay, medium, uh, there are so many protocols which has been used uh, during this project, but uh, the pictures that has been shown or displayed over here, the medium which has been used was MS medium was selected, uh, which was found to be the best medium for the cultivation, uh, micropropagation work. And in medium, the supplementation of different uh, 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 auxins and cytokinins have been done in which IAA was used and a very little amount of, very little concentration of IAA and uh, some concentration of BAP, which has been used. The best result was shown in 0.5 mg per liter IA and 2.5 mg per liter BAP. And we, after 25 days, we uh, saw about 12, 11 to 12 on an average of shoot tips, which was developed. And for rooting, uh, NAA was used. Any more questions from anyone? Thank you, Dr. Rashmi. Thank you, ma'am. Nice and informative presentation. Thank you, ma'am. Now I request the next presenter. The next presenter is Ms. Shruti Verma. Yes, ma'am. Shruti, you can, uh -huh. your screen is visible. Good afternoon, everyone. The topic of our presentation is ameliorative effect of human and soya extract against arsenic toxicity in Drosophila melanogaster. Introduction. Arsenic is a metalloid naturally occurring in soil, air, and water. It exists in both organic and inorganic forms. It is commonly used in pharmaceuticals, agricultural chemicals, and industries. Arsenic can reach out to contaminate the environment through feces, urine, industrial, and agricultural waste. As we all know, ati sarvatra varjet, which means excess of anything is harmful. So arsenic poisoning has also thrown a new challenge to the survival of mankind. Its acute toxicity can lead to vomiting, abdominal pain, skin lesions. On the other hand, its chronic toxicity can lead to cancer and cardiovascular diseases. Arsenic is also able to affect plant metabolism, that is photosynthesis. Model organism for the experiment. So the question arises that why we choose Drosophila melanogaster? Because of its genetic homology with humans and short generation time, effects of toxicants can be assessed at different biological stages, like larval, pupil, and adult. Also, Drosophila produces large number of offsprings. Plant products used for amelioration. So we took two plant products, curcumin and soya extract. Curcumin is an important component of turmeric. It is an anti-inflammatory agent and is a potent antioxidant. On the other hand, soya extract contains isoflavones, which are regarded as the powerhouse of health benefits. Soya is an excellent source of protein and it increases bone density and helps in fighting coronary heart diseases. Objectives, to trap native fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster, to culture fruit flies on standard cornmeal media, to maintain the single line culture, to determine lethal and sublethal dose of arsenic trioxide in fruit flies, to assess oxidative stress induced due to arsenic trioxide by LPO, and to assess the probable ameliorative potential of curcumin and soya extract against arsenic induced toxicity. Coming to materials and methods. So first of all, trapping of flies and stock preparation was done. 
For this, banana peel was used as a bait, and standard cornmeal media was prepared. Finally, single line culture was maintained. Determination of lethal and sublethal concentration of arsenic trioxide. For this, different concentrations of arsenic trioxide solution was mixed in standard cornmeal media, and different sets of bottle were prepared, as shown in the figure. Preparation of stock solution of plant products for amelioration. For preparing curcumin stock solution, thirty six point eight three gram of pure curcumin powder was dissolved in hundred ml DMSO. On the other hand, for preparing soya extract, soya seeds were collected and dried, and finally methanolic extract was prepared using rotatory vacuum evaporator, as shown in the figure. And finally, the extract was dissolved in hundred ml DMSO. Preparation of media for assess assessment of amelioration. For preparing curcumin and arsenic trioxide media, working concentration of arsenic was mixed with different concentrations of curcumin in the standard cornmeal media. The same procedure was followed for preparing soya extract and arsenic trioxide media. Lipid peroxidation assay. For this, the flies were first weighed, then homogenized and centrifuged. In the supernatant, mixtures were of TCA and TBA were mixed, and it was finally incubated in the water bath. And the observance was taken at five thirty two nanometer and six hundred nanometer. Finally, the MDA level was calculated by using the given formula, and statistical analysis was performed using one way ANOVA, two way ANOVA, and t test for verifying the significant differences between the various sets of data. Now I would take my part. Continue results and discussion. Anjali Ranjan, please. Thank you, Shruti. So coming to results and discussion. Lethal and sublethal concentration of arsenic trioxide. The present study revealed that survival of flies in arsenic-treated media was less as compared to control, and significant reduction in the lifespan was observed with increase in concentration of arsenic in the media, which can be seen by the graph given here. Now, acute toxicity was observed in four days, whereas chronic in seven days, and hundred percent mortality was seen at zero point seven five millimolar arsenic trioxide, whereas fifty percent at zero point five millimolar arsenic trioxide concentration. And thus, on the basis of results observed, zero point five five millimolar was taken as the working concentration for the flies. Survival of flies cultured in curcumin-containing medium and soya extract-containing medium was comparable to control medium. No significant difference was found in the three replicate bottles of all three experimental setups. Assessment of amelioration: the problem caused by arsenic can be addressed through Ayurveda. Environment factors such as diet has huge impact on lifespan of the melanogaster. Best survival rate was found in 0.55 millimolar arsenic-containing media with one millimolar curcumin and 1.5 millimolar soya extract, respectively. Now this figure is about the comparison of lifespan of B. melanogaster in different media, namely control, arsenic, curcumin, arsenic plus curcumin, soya extract, arsenic plus soya extract. Lipid peroxidation assay. It is a marker of oxidative stress. Now LPO assay revealed change in the level of MDA produced in the tissues of flies exposed to different media, where it was highest in arsenic treated flies. Flies treated with curcumin and soya extract showed reduction in the level of MDA. Thereby making them as a good antioxidant. Conclusion: There was a substantial decrease in survival of flies observed in the flies exposed to arsenic trioxide, where 100% mortality was observed at 0.75 millimolar and 50% at 0.5 millimolar concentration of arsenic trioxide, making them as lethal and sublethal dose respectively. Curcumin and soya extract were found to reduce the toxic effect of arsenic in fruit flies, where best ameliorative potential was found at one millimolar for curcumin and one point five millimolar for soya extract. Significant reduction in the level of MDA was marked in flies exposed to arsenic trioxide when treated with curcumin and soya extract, respectively. This suggests that curcumin and soya extract can be useful as a dietary supplement as they have promising antioxidant potential to combat arsenic-induced toxicity. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Shruti.
it was a very nice presentation at your level thank you ma'am may i ask one question yes ma'am why did you select soya extract for amelioration strategy because ma'am we are using it in uh, daily in our home it is a product which can uh, which we can access easily okay keep up your good work so thank you thank for the presentation anyone thank else you, wants to ask a question from the audience or presenters no questions then thank you shruti we'll thank proceed you, to the next presentation now may i request the next presenter dr aarti kumari dr aarti your screen is visible good afternoon everyone uh, today i am here to present uh, my study uh, which is virtual screening of natural compounds for in silico innovation studies of penicillin binding protein pbp2a against methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus which is also commonly called as mrsa why the question arises what and why is antibiotic resistant many of you must be aware of the term antibiotic resistant so let me give little uh, more emphasis on that how it is observed in the lab so in the left of hand side of my slide you can see a petri plate which is showing a different drone of inhibition and one of the uh, this disc which is an antibiotic disc is showing the resistant from that organism so this is the way uh, we uh, see the antibiotic resistance in the uh, laboratory and we identify with a particular kind of organism is resistant or sensitive to particular antibiotic or not so why we are concerned about this antibiotic resistance before going to that i will just give a brief introduction what are the causes of antibiotic resistance so WHO has given us uh, this list that is Im improving the antibiotic resistance in different kind of microorganism. So it is giving a suggestion that antibiotics should be handled with care. The over prescription of the antibiotic is quite prevalent in our society. The patients not finishing their treatment, they stop the taking antibiotic in between. uh overuse of antibiotics in livestock and fish farming is also increasing the accumulation of the antibiotic in our system and thus increasing the antibiotic resistance poor infection control in hospital clinics and lack of hygiene and poor sanitation as well as lack of new antibiotics being developed is the major causes of the antibiotic resistance and i was telling that uh, why the resistance is of global concern because the development of antibiotic is quite slow process as we can see the resistance is increasing here is the list given for the different uh, resistance identified for a basic antibiotic which were discovered so we can see there is a time frame of 10 to 8 uh, uh, 12 years or, or like 5 to 6 years for the antibiotic resistance development but the antibiotic itself is developed within a period of 15 years and so so this is a really a big scenario where we have to really think about that why and uh, how to stop the antibiotic resistance as well as how to treat the resistant varieties of the organism uh, which are already present in our society so coming back to mrsa uh because this is a, uh, the main uh, theme of my study that i am trying the different natural products uh, to inhibit the mrsa variety to, which is uh, resistant to methicillin uh, so and why i have taken the natural compounds because we all know that there is a less uh, side effects of the natural compounds and we have a variety of natural compounds present in our natural resources which can be exploited very less has been explored and we can explore many many more so mrsa is 
or uh, commonly uh, if you say uh, say it is a variety of streptococcus aureus and it is uh, resistant to methicillin antibiotic that's why we call it as a methicillin resistant streptococcus aureus it is a gram positive bacteria and uh, which you can see in the right hand side of my slide that it appears in the microscope as a gram, gram positive focus it is the most common cause of skin and respiratory system and uh, Initially, it was inhibited by penicillin, which was acting on the cell wall synthesis mechanism of this bacteria. But slowly, the penicillin uh, uh, was also not able to kill this bacteria, and the penicillin resistant varieties were uh, prevalent in the society. And this penicillin resistant was caused by the enzyme called as beta lactamase, and which is able to cleave the beta lactam antibiotic which were uh, prevently used for the treatment of the uh, bacteria so how what exactly we are doing in this study that we are uh, trying to use the computational program which can uh, screen a, a large number of compounds which is not possible in in uh, wet lab studies uh, wet lab studies will take a lot of time so we are just trying to screen or uh, some of the compounds which might be most potent against uh, those particular microorganisms against the resistant uh, mechanism of the so we uh, uh, we are trying to uh, target the cell wall formation of that bacteria which is very necessary for the survival of that bacteria so here is the mechanism showing uh, which is uh, giving an idea how the cell wall of the bacteria especially the i'm talking about the mrsa variety so how it is formed so we can see that uh, there is a need of cross linking of the peptidoglycan layer and in this the one layer if we consider this as a two layer that you can see this is the lower side it is one layer which is series of nag nam residues are joined together and in which the nam is also associated with the peptide uh, linkage and this peptide linkage is again joining with the other peptide linkage on the other strand of the peptidoglycan layer so this uh, transpeptidation is one reaction which join these two layers together and th that's why the cross linking of the peptidoglycan layer occurs and that will uh, finally give to the cell wall of the bacteria so we are trying to inhibit this transpeptidation reaction which is the function of the penicillin binding protein which is uh, i am especially i am talking about the penicillin binding protein 2a which is especially present in the resistant variety of the staphylococcus aureus there are other penicillin binding proteins which has been reported in the uh, uh, different microorganism and as well as in the staphylococcus aureus but especially this pb uh, p2a uh, is especially reported in case of methicillin resistant variety, uh, variety of staphylococcus aureus and this is the product of mec ag so finally we are targeting the mec ag product and that's why uh, uh, to if we will inhibit this particular protein then we can inhibit that bacteria so that's why we can treat the resistant variety of the mrsa there are other genes also which are uh, studied uh, nowadays uh, those are fem and og factors along with the uh, mec gene these two other factors are also studied which will be my future study so coming back to the penicillin binding protein so let us understand the three dimensional structure because this is the one where we are trying to target our natural compounds so this is the three dimensional structure of the penicillin binding protein 2a here is the active site and this is the electrophoric site and in this it the it has been shown by different studies that 3403 residues uh, is quite important and it is present in the active site so for this study uh, uh, this study was the smaller part of the bigger study so this is the study plan in which i am just discussing the in silico studies 
So in this, what we started with is uh, I uh, took the uh, sequence of the MECA gene uh, from NCBI database and also the protein sequences. Further, the BLAST was used to identify the protein, which is very similar to the uh, uh, penicillin binding protein. And that the that gave the result. You can see the multiple sequence alignment result. And this is the most uh, probable uh, protein which we can choose for our study um, because of the BLAST result. So this is the 6Q9 and B. So this, protein, uh, this sequence was uh, available in RCBS database, which is a protein data bank. From there, we downloaded the uh, this protein, this is uh, penicillin binding protein 2A. So this is the uh, three-dimensional structure of the uh, X-ray crystallography determined structure of penicillin binding protein. So this can be used as an uh, experimental material where we can try our different ligands, whether that ligand is binding to or not. So this is available as the piperacillin and quinazolin known is bound already to that X-ray crystallography structure. And uh, for the further study, we have to uh, remove these uh, ligands from here and we have to try to uh, see whether our ligands are able to bind or not. So I choose this particular site because it is already seen that piperacillin is Excuse able to me. inhibit that. Excuse me, Dr. Arti. Please stick yes, to your time. You have already crossed the time limit of 10 minutes. Okay, ma'am. Just um, I'm finishing. Huh. So I use this active site where the piperacillin was already binding, and uh, that uh, and with that active site, I uh, try to screen uh, uh, around 638 molecules, and these are the some of the molecules which has already bound to that, and especially we found uh, that. The, uh, the these ten compounds were uh, most probable compounds which can inhibit uh, to uh, this particular protein, and especially the C uh, FMAU and uh, this uh, Janthon B is able to inhibit most probably. So the further in vivo studies can be uh, done to understand the exact mechanism of that. And uh, in this, we reported that uh, there are important residues which are. Uh, important for this inhibition is serine 403, threonine 444, threonine 600, and so on. So, and, uh, and this was exactly the same residues which was also found in the piperacillin. So, this study was uh, relevant to the uh, study, uh, previous studies, and also the uh, giving the emphasis that as the piperacillin can inhibit, it can also inhibit the uh, this particular penicillin binding protein. And so that we can uh, inhibit the uh, antibiotic resistance. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Arti. Very impressive work to study the multidrug resistant Staphylococcus aureus bacteria and exploration and identification of natural compounds having potential to be used against these resistant microorganisms. So anyone wants to ask some question? Any questions from audience or the participants? So there are no questions. So we'll move to the next presenter. So moving further, I request Ms. Shivani Jaiswal. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Shivani Jaswal, you may present yes, your paper. Yes, ma'am. Visible, ma'am? Yes, it's coming. Now your screen is visible. You may proceed. Good afternoon, everyone. A very warm welcome and thanks to the Research Committee Department of Computer Application, Patna Women's College, Patna. My presentation is study of aromycoflora in different patient wards of PMCH Patna Bihar. 
माय क्वाइट डॉक्टर सुरेंद्र कुमार प्रसाद हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट वॉटनी मगध महिला कॉलेज पर so and the study purpose an attempt was the made for the purpose of isolation and identification of the fungal load indoor and outdoor of the different patient wards in patna medical college and hospital aromycoflora simply refers to the airborne fungal contribution of the environment simply refers the Um, aerobiology was coined by the American plant pathologist Fred Campbell, where to the denote the airborne fungal spores, pollen grains, and the other airborne microbes. Rajapus causes the disease, the known as the micromycosis, characterized by the growing hive and the strong uh, surrounding blood vessels. Different studies indicated that fungal extract can cause allergic rhinitis and the bronchial asthma. Indoor dwellings. air almost always contain exposure but the number and the type of the exposure depends on the time day weather season and geographical locality metal and methyl aromycoflora from the different sap number 2020 is prepared with the help of bucket volumetric air sampler and petrified exposure method and employing the culture exposure method at the weekly interval petrified containing sterilized potato dextrose agar pd medium were exposed for the 10 to 20 minutes inside the different corners of patient beds in the indoor patient wards and also placed outdoor areas Ma'am, I'm visible or audible? You are audible and you are visible. Please okay, ma'am. Proceed. After exposure of the petri plates incubated at twenty-seven degrees Celsius for three to four days incubator. After incubation, fungal colonies were grown. The colonies were counted with the help of the colony forming unit. Total number of colonies of the colonies of one species. of the total number of pollen species identification of these species were made on the basis of the micro and the macro uh, micro and macro morphological reviews and the surface colony coloration and the grown on the medium and the further the morphological characters with the help of literature type sampling was done as a result total 11 genera were observed out of total observed genera micromycosis known as black fungus rhizopus mucor dermaphytic fungus curvularia lunata cladosporium herbarium microsperm canis and histoplasma capsulate showed there the maximum dominancy which was the given below at the tabular form so let's take a look so these are the type sampled given from the 21 day 9 2020 to 9 3 2021 day 1 The rhizopus presents the September month, September, October, and the November month, and the penicillium found the both three months and the aspergillus. So most dominant is the mucor. All presents now all uh, seasons, and these are the number of colonies. The total number of three hundred nineteen colonies were found, and thirty six colonies of mucor, and the least number of colonies fusarium alternatum. So there we have the isolated fungus. These are the observe observe under the microscopic view of the some uh, fungal growth. These are the graphical representation. The mucor highest growth and the least dominant are uh, dominant, and the least dominant are the fusarium alternatum. Now result analysis. Culture plate exposure method was carried out for the isolation of fungal species. From the genera found, some these fungi are rhizopus and mucor micromycosis, also known as the black fungus, affects the sinus, lungs, skin, and brain diseases. Alternaria causes the asthma and the skin lesions, and the ulcers are caused by aspergillus. In human, aspergillus mucor panicillium were resulted as dominant species in indoor and outdoor patient wards, whereas the fusarium. At least dominant species followed the Cladosporium and Rhizopus. Percentage contribution colony forming unit by the one species the same. The least genera Fusarium alternaria six point two six and the mucor eleven point two eight percent. 
Now, conclusion, the present study around microflora survey wall shows that the number of harmful fungus present both in indoor and outdoor patients. PMCH st study shows that the total number of 11 genera were identified. This is harmful for us and causes many allergies. The indoor and outdoor areas must be kept clean, always properly ventilated beds and tables. Clean properly air conditioner and ICU rooms. Machines should be cleaned properly. Always use neat and clean bedsheet and maintain personal hygiene. Not only patient, also for the safety of the others like doctors, nurses, and visitors also. Indoor and outdoor pa uh, patients were cleaned regularly and garbage and the other dirty used products disposed properly. So I'm going to share the, some other pictures. So there we have the sub indoor and outdoor areas of the uh, uh, air samplers where we kept in OPD rooms also. There we have the some slides prepared for preparation slides. Burkert air sampler that we know as rehab plastic surgery outdoor wards, rehab OPD wards. I'm highly obliged to the principal Magad Maila College, Patna University, Patna to give permission to do the lab work and they are the valuable motivation. I'm indebted to my guide, Dr. Surain Kumar Parshad. He's my guide. Very thankful of to HOD Botany, Dr. Puspanjali for, uh, for her guidance, support and inspiration. A special thanks to Dr. MP Tirvedi, HOD Patna Science College, Patna University. I'm grateful to PMCH Patna Bihar for the permission sampling of their patient. And thank you so much, ma'am, Shubha ma'am, and Patna Women's College. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Shivani. Thank you, Ms. Shivani, for thank your you, such informative and scary presentation. The presence of airborne fungal spores in the atmosphere of PMCH is very alarming situation. Yes, ma'am. It will cause several hospital caused infection. Yes, ma'am. And so sample were go... uh, sample were done by after COVID, ma'am. Sept uh, September 2022, March 2021. So the authorities of PMCH must be informed about the findings of your research work. Yes, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. So thank you for this informative. Thank you, so much, Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much, Any questions from the audience or participants? So there are no questions. Ma'am, I'm your student of 2014 Botany, from Botany, 2014 batch. Nice, nice to, to see to you, you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It was a very informative presentation. Yes, ma'am. And it should be informed to the authorities there in the PMC. Yes, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Also, so much. also, I'm studying for allergens, allergens purpose. Okay. For the studies. Yes, ma'am. So keep up your good work. Thank you. Thank so you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So let's move to the next presenter. So the next presenta uh, presentation is by Mr. Praveen, uh, Praveen Deepak. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Praveen Deepak, yes, please present your paper. Is my slide visible, ma'am? Yes, sir. Your slide is visible and you are audible. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, I'm Praveen Deepak, Assistant Professor Swami Sajan and College Jahanabad, which is constituent of Magad University, both here. Uh, I am here today to present I am uh, here to present uh, my <coughs> study on drug discovery in rheumatoid arthritis uh, with chronic inflammation <coughs> in involving senotonsil uh, transducer and uh, activator of uh, transcription factor 3 by medical, by medical databases. First of all, I need to understand what is rheumatoid arthritis as the slide indicates. Rheumatoid arthritis is a type of chronic systematic inflammatory disease predominantly affecting diarthrogeal joints. Uh, 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 in addition to uh, joints, in addition to joints, it frequently affects a variety of other organs too, 
Inflamed joints are characterized by inflamed lining of joints causing damage to joint tissue such as synovial membrane, cartilage, and articular bones. A resulting damage of tissue causes chronic pain, unsteadiness, and deformity. In a uh, near uh, uh, below uh, cartoon, we can uh, we can see here the all type of uh, deformities are there. That is a uh, near deformity which leads to uh, inability to extend the finger. Ulnar deviation of metacarpo of phalangeal joints, which is resulting for, uh, from uh, abridgment of uh, joints and uh, swan neck deformities. Uh, this uh, slide shows the uh, radiographic images of uh, all type of deformities comparing with normal joints. Uh, these slides are taken from or adapted from Brosso et al. Rheumatology uh, uh, International published in 2009. It is since it is a progressive disease, uh, progressive disease uh, pro since it is progressive disease, just start with the inflammation, uh, deformities in uh, fingers start appearing. Uh, these uh, deformities uh, may be of two kinds. Uh, type 1 deformities or conservative type having uh, type 1 thumb uh, deformities and uh, including uh, boutonniere uh, deformities. And second is multiple finger deformities, including swan neck deformities in the finger. We are going to the pathogenesis of uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, uh, though uh, the etiology of rheumatoid arthritis is not known, uh, it uh, starts with immune reactivity leading to the formation of autoantibodies, uh, which is known as uh, rheumatoid factors uh, or, or RF factors, or autoantibodies auto against uh, CP or circulated protein or carbamylated protein. These autoantibodies leads to the inflammation, which in turn results in the activation of multiple uh, 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 biological processes involving several uh, pathways uh, leading to the uh, further inflammation and oxidative stress. These oxidative stress and interconnected inflammatory pathways activation worsen, worsen the symptoms. Since uh, I have confined my work on uh, my study on uh, uh, involvement of the step three uh, for the drug in uh, uh, synovial inflammation for the drug distribution purposes, uh, extracting through the biomedical databases, uh, we uh, and I have tried to understand what the role of or involvement of the step three in the signaling basket. Here we see, here we see uh, uh, step three is activated by activated the genus kinase two, uh, which is turned the step three, the amylase then uh, migrated to the uh, nucleus to bind a uh, step three responsive gene element to uh, for a transcription of related genes. That contributing that contributes further inflammation and, uh, and pathogenesis of arthritic joint inflammation arthritic disease. Coming to the uh, statistics of uh, rheumatoid arthritis in global or Indian scenario, uh, because uh, it uh, also tells about why such a study is important in this current perspective. Uh, in global scenario, three cases per one lakh population uh, 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 at the, at the, in the form of incidence, as we found, which increases with the age, that is, uh, that, is that can be found at peak, peak at uh, 35 to 50, peer, 50 years of age, uh, having a prevalence, uh, prevalence rate of 0 0.5 to 1%. Uh, while in India, uh, incidence rate is uh, 20 to 40 cases per uh, one lakh population with a prevalence rate of 0.28. 0 0.28 uh, to 0 0.77. Today, there are about 10 lakh people suffering from rheumatoid arthritis. Treatment uh, regimens uh, uh, comprises of NSAID, uh, that is uh, non-steroidal uh, uh, non -steroidal, uh, anti inflammatory drugs, corticosteroids, GM, GMARD, that is disease modified anti rheumatic drugs. Uh, some of those uh, modalities are also there that comprise uh, interleukin-6 uh, neutralizing antibodies, TNF alpha inhibitors, uh, B cell inhibitors, etc. However, all these uh, have uh, several uh, severe side effects uh, and the patient and greatly that greatly affect the life of patient and the treatment. Thus, more reliable 
and sale drugs are required to be to date. The uh, objective of this study is to find out suitable new therapeutic drug candidate or candidate targeting a stage 3 and a stage 3 interactive protein for the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis chronic synovitis. This uh, study uh, has been taken uh, uh, by uh, these, uh, uh, from these uh, databases that is uh, from to SEPA, HPGD, Reactom, Sync, and Drug uh, Gene Inter 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 Interaction Database or BGIDB database. This is the screen sort of uh, uh, permit to insertable database, which has the uh, user search and retrieval by, by selecting suitable phrases. I have selected the uh, four phrases, which are rheumatoid arthritis, no, sorry, rheumatoid synovitis, estetic synovitis and inflammation, estetic signaling in uh, autoimmune diseases, estetic signaling in rheumatoid synovitis. Uh, after uh, going through the permit uh, uh, ensemble database uh, with uh, phrases state three uh, signaling and autonomy uh, joint inflammation, this data set uh, was uh, retrieved. This slide shows the steps of whole study as well as the results obtained. Uh, as uh, we can see, that uh, first step of the first step of the study is text binding. Uh, second is uh, protein protein interaction analysis, and third one is drug gene interaction analysis. In parenthesis, uh, uh, in text mining in parenthesis, uh, we, uh, we can see the number of genes, associated genes, uh, uh, associated genes uh, 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 which has been derived uh, in text mining to different uh, uh, such phrases, such as the uh, text one, the uh, rheumatoid attacks have 69. Uh, associated gene. Text to state three signaling and, and inflammation have uh, 108 uh, uh, genes associated genes. Text three, text three, state three signaling and autoimmune joint inflammation have 16 uh, uh, associated genes. Uh, however, text uh, four, we have not, uh, I have not get uh, uh, any uh, associated genes uh, in uh, state three signaling and inflammation. This slide uh, shows the uh, result of reactome analysis, uh, reactome database analysis. Uh, going through the reactome database to uh, retrieve a state three in rheumatoid synovitis, Jack, uh, Jack state signaling pathway was shown by, uh, through the database, where uh, some uh, highly stable infective genes are selected for, uh, genes were selected for further uh, enrichment uh, through protein protein analysis through, the, uh, through other database that is string. Database. Uh, this uh, this slide shows the protein protein inter interaction in nodules and lines uh, of, of different colors. These different lines uh, indicate the degree of interaction between two nodules or proteins. Highly interactive sets of proteins that are uh, connected with SK3 were selected from uh, selected for drug gene interaction analysis. This uh, uh, after analysis, we got uh, results of the uh, these uh, results of drug gene, drug gene uh, interaction analysis. Uh, these results shows the number of uh, uh, drugs that the, the that target Jack one protein. Same is for uh, Jack two uh, uh, genes. Same three uh, Jack three genes and uh, same for uh, type two uh, that is cytosine kinase two genes and. Uh, 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 receptor related or fun receptor uh, alpha or a, pro, a, a gene or alpha, alpha protein. Uh, so this uh, figure shows the some uh, uh, therapeutic drugs shared uh, similar common target genes that can, that is uh, that is represented by a very big band, this Venn diagram. Coming to the conclusion. A study shows that through text mining, associated genes can be assessed. These, these, these genes can be further enriched according to their functional cellular molecular characteristics. Genes obtained through uh, such enrichment can be enriched through protein-protein inter interaction analysis. And genes set again enriched by limiting interaction score to get highly interactive gene set. Highly interactive genes can be analyzed for drug gene uh, analysis to get therapeutic drugs for drug 
genes. All, ge all genes are not uh, draggables. So we can uh, here we can uh, find out which uh, drug, which genes are draggable. Drugs with high interaction score can be used for further study to validate its predicted effect of transform through these data sources. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Praveen, Deepak. This is all about my study, ma'am. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you have given a very detailed description of rheumatoid arthritis. It is a very good initiative towards cure of rheumatoid arthritis. So, any questions from the audience? Or the participants? So since there are no questions, we'll proceed to the next presenter. So now may I request Ms. Uh, Ms. Srishti Sonam to present her paper. Ms. Srishti Sonam. Are you there, Srishti? Srishti, Hasina Praveen, Ms. Shruti. Ms. Asha Singh, anyone? Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Your screen, uh, your screen is visible. Combination of lead and different organs are from edible fish collected from the fish markets of Patna, Bihar. Fish is comprised a major part of the human diet due to high protein content, low saturated fat, and sufficient omega 3 fatty acids, which are known to support good health. In 2017, fish accounted for about 17% of total animal protein and 7% of all proteins consumed globally. Heavy metals are among the most serious environmental pollutants due to their high toxicity, ease of accumulation due to non-biodegradable nature, and are extremely persistent in the environment. Contamination and pollution of aquatic environment, uh, environments with heavy metals from natural and anthropogenic sources. Fishes have the ability to accumulate heavy metals in their tissues by absorption along the gill surface and kidney, liver and gut tract wall. Lead is naturally occurring toxic metal found in earth crust. Due to its non-biodegradable nature and continuous use, its concentration accumulates in the environment with increasing hazards. Its concentration in water significantly increased by anthropogenic sources. Bioaccumulation in fishes. Bioaccumulation in fishes. Lead enters through runoff into water system, industrial and civic waste streams. Fishes bioaccumulate lead from water and food, although there is evidence that lead accumulation in fishes may lead to contaminated water. Effect on humans. Exposure to lead can produce alteration in physiological functions of the body and is associated with many diseases. Lead exposure can induce neurological, respiratory, urinary, and cardiovascular disorders. Importance of this study. People feeding on fish contaminated with lead can directly get some concentrations of it. Metal accumulation in different body organs of fishes of various feeding habits were extensively studied in different aquatic ecosystems, but similar studies in fishes from local fish markets of Patna were scanty. The objectives of this study were keeping in view the above facts, the present study was planned 
to determine concentration of lead in various organs of various bird practice, Katla Katla and Lebu Rohita, collected from local fish markets of Patna, Bihar, to assess the possible health hazards from these three fishes to its consumers. Now I'll hand over to Shruti. Thank you, Asta. Materials and methods. Three fish species selected for the present study were Labio Rohita, Clarius Pachtacus, and Katla Katla. Labio Rohita, also known as Rohu. Labio Rohita is a widely consumed teleost fish in different states of India, including Bihar. It contains a high protein value, including omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin A, B, and C. Clarius Pachacus, known as mangur in Bengali and walking catfish in English. It is an air-breathing fish. It consumes a wide variety of prey. Its fat content is also very low and is therefore easily digestible. Katla Katla. Katla is a fish with large and broad head, a large protruding lower jaw and upturned mouth. Katla is a surface and mid-water feeder. It has great market demand due to nutritive value and good taste. The fish samples were collected from four popular fish markets of Patna, namely Raja Bazar Fish Market, Boring Road Choraha Fish Market, Hartali Mood Fish Market, and Patna City Fish Market during March 2022. Three fish specimens from each species were purchased from the four fish markets weighed in gram and total length measured in centimeter. Each specimen was kept separately in sterile polyethylene bag and transported to Central Resource Laboratory at Patna Women's College, Patna in Icebox. In the laboratory, the fish samples were washed and brain, muscles, liver, hearts and gills were dissected with the help of surgical blades and scissors and oven dried. One gram of each oven dried samples was weighed on electronic balance and digested with acid sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid in 1 is to 1 ratio. The prepared samples were then evaluated for the presence of lead using atomic absorption spectrophotometer and metal concentration was expressed as microgram per gram dry weight of each organ. For lead, it was calibrated with standard solution with 1, 2, 4 and 8 ppm strength. Statistical analysis, the results are presented presented as mean plus minus standard deviation, total variation in a set of data through one-way ANOVA, the level of significance was taken as P less than 0.05, different softwares were used in the process such as GraphPad, Prism 5, MS Excel, and MS Word. Now I would like to call Shristi to continue further for result and discussion. Thank you, Shruti. Results and discussion. The concentration of lead expressed in microgram per gram dry tissues in gills, liver, heart, brain, and muscle of labia rohita, clarius vitracus, and katla katla collected from four fish markets of Patna. Bihar are summarized in table number one. So here we can see that in labia rohita, highest concentration of lead is found in liver, while it is scanned, it is not detectable in liver, heart, and muscles. In case of clarius vitracus, highest concentration is also seen in liver, while it is not detectable in gills, in some area, in uh, heart, and in muscle as well. In case of Katla Katla, highest concentration is detected in gills, while it is not detectable in heart and muscle. Here we uh, have summarized overall accumulation pattern of lead in labia rohita, caries batrachis, and Katla Katla. So figure one shows comparison of lead concentration among the sample of different sites in labia rohita. As we can see here that the Raja Bazaar uh, uh, fish sample contains highest concentration of lead, while Patna city shows lowest concentration. Figure 2 shows uh, the same in case of Clarius batrachis, 
highest concentration can be seen in Boring Road, while lowest concentration can be seen in Patna City. Now, in Figure Three, we have compared the lead concentration in case of Katla Katla, where highest concentration can be seen in Hartali Mor site and the lowest concentration at the Boring Road site. Now, next, we have done average concentration of lead in different organs of Labia Rohita, Claris Vitracus, and Katla Katla from the four studied fish markets. So, figure four, uh, figure four shows average concentration of lead in different organs of Labia Rohita, Claris Vitracus, and Katla Katla from four sites. Figure five shows overall concentration of lead in Labia Rohita, Claris Vitracus, and Katla Katla. As we can see here, that liver, uh, highest concentration can be seen in liver as well as brain. While lowest concentration can be seen in the muscle of the fish, the fish samples we have taken. Next, figure six. Figure six shows overall concentration of lead in labia rohita, claris vitracus, and katla katla from four studied sites. The highest can be seen in katla, while the lowest can be seen in lower in labia rohita. Discussion. So, uh, uh, liver of fish is an important organ for ecotoxicological study and the prime site for accumulation of lead. So in our study, liver had highest lead accumulation than muscle and gill. The same was reported by Prabha and Rajkumar. Fish muscle and brain. Muscle and brain, lead content of all the three fish species in the present study was detected below the permissible limit, which is given by the WHO. Highest lead content was detected in Katla Katla. Overall highest concentration of lead was detected in Katla Katla at the Hatali Moor fish market. As we have concluded that from figure three and figure six, and analyzing organ-wise accumulation of lead showed most of the accumulation was in gills, liver, and brains, which could be discarded. Next conclusion. So the study of lead concentration in labia rohita, claris vitracus, and katta katta collected from four fish markets of Patna, Bihar showed that lead concentration in these fishes was under the permissible limit. But people should be aware of the possible threats in the near future as more accumulation of lead causes serious health issues. The maximum accumulation was found in liver and brain, clarius vitracus, which could be avoided for consumption. So these are the pictures of the fish markets and the protocol and uh, uh, atomic absorptive spectrophotometer references. Thank you. So thank you, Shruti, Shristi, and Astha, Neetu, Hafina, all the group members. Thank now, you, may I know, have you tried to find out the source of fishes in the fish market of Patna? From Hajipur. From Hajipur. So these yes, are the fishes from the river Gandak or Ganges. Yeah. Um, we asked them for the site, but they were not really, uh, they were not answering much, but they were like, uh, we have taken it from Hajipur, but they were not mentioning the uh, source. But near Patna city fish market, there was a lake uh, near the fish market. Okay. So bioaccumulation and biomagnification of heavy metals in food chain is very serious anthropogenic, uh, po anthropogenic problems these days. So very good piece of work at your level. Thank you, ma'am. So any questions from the audience or participants? So since there are no questions, anyone wants to ask anything? So let's, let's move to the next presenter. Now I request Ms. Ruchi. Ms. Ruchi. Good afternoon to all. Please present, present your paper. May I audible now? Yes, you are audible, but your screen is not visible yet. Okay. Now your screen is visible. Okay. Good afternoon to all present here. I, Ruchi, Research Scholar, Department of Botany, Patna University, Patna. Under the supervision of Professor Nair Ahmed, 
Department of Botany, Patna University, Patna. I write this article related to my research topic, and my topic of research is electrospun plant nanofiber for therapeutic potential using nigella species. So, firstly, I done extraction of nigella seed, and my topic of research article is characterization of n hexane fraction of nigella sativa plant. Nigella sativa is an annual herbaceous flowering plant commonly known as black caraway, black cumin, nigella, or phalongi. In our local language, it is also known as mangrela. It is native to South and Southwest Asia, North Africa, and Southern Europe. The plant has been used for culinary as well as medicinal purposes throughout the world for thousands of years as it con con contains high level of antioxidant with appreciable free radical scavengering properties. Various medicinal properties of Nigella sativa have been well documented like anti-diabetic, anti-cancer, anti-flatulence, analgesic effect, diuretic effect, anti worm anti-inflammatory effect, anti-asthmatic effect with tonifying kidney, invigorating brain, straightening spleen, antioxidant, and so on. As the whole plant of Nigella sativa acts as the multifunctional food, it is necessary to determine an efficient solvent extraction method with high efficiency, simple operation, and high purity, concentrating on the component analysis and quality stability. There are many methods of extraction, but I go with the soxlate extraction. Here, the methodology, the methodology followed has been described by a flow diagram. The plant seed of Nigella sativa collected from the local Patel Nagar market, Patna, Bihar, India, identified according to the relevant monograph of Indian pharmacopoeia. The plant material was botanically authenticated at Botany Department of Patna University, Patna. Voucher specimen of plant extract have been deposited in the department. The plant material was washed under running tap water blotted with filter paper and dried in the shed at room temperature. It was then grounded in a mortar. The freshly prepared plant material was then undergoing the process of extraction by using soxate, soxate extraction. This process is otherwise known as continuous hot extraction. The apparatus is called soxate extractor made up of glass. It consists of a round bottom flask extraction chamber, siphon tube, and condenser at the top. A dry, grinded, and finely powdered plant material is placed inside the porous bag called thimble, made up of clean clothes or a strong filter paper, and tightly closed. The extraction solvent is poured into the bottom flask, followed by a thimble into the extraction chamber. The solvent is then heated from the bottom flask, evaporates and passes through the condenser where it condenses and flows down to the extraction chamber and extracts the drug by coming in contact consequently. When the level of solvent in the um, extraction chamber reaches the top of the siphon, the solvent and extracted plant material flow back to the flask. The entire process continues repeatedly until the drug is completely extracted. A point where a solvent flowing from the extraction chamber does not leave any residue behind. This method is suitable for the plant material that is partially soluble in fusion solvent and for plant material with insoluble impurities. It is not suitable method for thermaliable plant material. Advantage of soxlate method, large amount of drug can be extracted from the small amount of solvent. It is not applicable to plant material that are heat stable. No filtration is required and high amount of heat could be applied. This advantage, uh, regular shaking is not possible and the method is not suitable for thermoliable materials.
phytochemical staining of plant extract. The staining of chemical constraints was carried out qualitatively with NHCN extract by using various chemical methods for qualitative test. Different solvent extract of plants were analyzed for the presence of alkyl white, saponin, flavonoid, fixed oil, and fats, tannins, and phenolic compounds according to standard method. Nowadays, awareness of people is increasing with regard to natural products as medicine. The World Health Organization describes a medicinal plant as any plant in which one or more of its organ contains substance that can be used for healing purpose or which are precursor for the synthesis of valuable drugs. With this knowledge in background, the present study was designed with the aim of phytochemical spinning of Nigella sativa plant extract. The results showed the presence of various active phytochemicals such as alkaloids, saponin, flavonoids, anthropinin, steroid, as well as tannin and phenolic compound with high antioxidant properties. Conclusion. The result of the study support the traditional application of the plant and suggest that the plant extract poses compound with multifunctional food properties as well as culinary and medicinal properties that can be used in novel drug formulation for treatment of a variety of disease. These are sub references from where I collect knowledge to write this article. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ruchi. Thank you, ma'am. You have explained the various medicinal properties of Nigella in an yes. elaborate manner. Yes. A very nice presentation. Any questions from the audience or presenters? No questions? So thank you, Ruchi. Thank you. Now I request Dr. Neeti Yashwardhini to present her paper. Yes, ma'am, I'm here. Good afternoon, everyone and one and all present here in this international conference. Today, I will present my research on the topic. Excuse me, Niti. Yes, your screen is not visible. You are audible, but your screen is not there. Now it is visible. I think it is visible now, ma'am. Now it, now it is visible. OK, thank you. So I will present uh, my research on the topic immunoinformatics and genomic characterization of SARS-CoV-2 helicase and SP13 mutational profile, <clears throat> which is an attractive antiviral therapeutic. Before I start, let me introduce you all with coronavirus, which I think needs least introduction in this current pandemic situation. <clears throat> SARS-CoV-2 is the etiolating agent of COVID-19 disease and it is a novel beta coronavirus belonging to the family coronaviridae and order Nidovides. It is an enveloped positive sense largest known RNA virus with a genome size of 30 kilobase. <clears throat> the coronavirus outbreak initiated from a small seafood market in Wuhan, China and spread all over the world. SARS-CoV-2 genome is of 30 KB size and is of positive sense single standard RNA, which comprises of two ORFs, ORF1A and ORF1B. The SARS-CoV-2 genome encodes 29 proteins with four structural proteins like spike, enveloped membrane, and nucleic acid, and 16 non-structural proteins, including nine accessory proteins. Among these 16 non-structural proteins, uh, two proteins, that is RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, NSP12, and helicase, NSP13, are the most conserved proteins and hence a suitable drug target. <clears throat> this figure shows the uh, different ORFs encoded by the SARS-CoV-2 genome. So here we can see that NSP13, which is helicase, is encoded by the ORF1B of SARS-CoV2 genome. So if, um, uh, when we move further, let, me, uh, let us see the role of uh, helicase that is NSP13. 
And SP13 plays an important role in virus replication, catalyzing the unwinding of nucleic acids and also separates the double helical structure of complex RNA into single standard form in an ATP dependent manner. It is conserved in MERS, SARS CoV, and SARS CoV 2. Hence, this vital characteristics gives and its conserved nature makes SARS CoV 2 helicase as, as one of the potential targets for the development of anti coronavirus agents. <clears throat> and SP and SP13 protein is comprises of five domains as we can see in the figure that is N terminal zinc binding domain, then uh, S stock domain 1A, 1B, and 2A. Then uh, zinc, binding do uh, zinc binding domain and 1A domain are very, very important as they are the one with which the NSP13 interacts with the NSP12, which is the main RNA polymerizing enzyme. So keeping this uh, role in mind, I uh, found some of the, I took some objectives, which were <coughs> identification of helicase mutants from Indian isolates with reference to Wuhan type isolates, their phylogenetic studies, estimation of protein, physical chemical properties, secondary and tertiary structure prediction, and impact of mutation on protein dynamics and stability, and some immunoinformatic study to uh, uh, see whether helicase can be a good vaccine target. So keeping these objectives in mind, the methodology which I used, I will explain very short, that is sequence retrieval from NCBI virus uh, database, then alignment using cluster omega, followed by view using jaw view, secondary and tertiary prediction using chimera, protein physical chemical properties using XPC tool, and protein dynamic study using Dynamute software. For immunoinformatic studies, I used IEDB software. So let's come to the interesting part of the findings, that is the results. A total of 51, as we can see in the table, a total of 54 point mutations were detected in the NSP13 sequence from India. And among these 51 mutants, we selected seven uh, mutants to be characterized further. Among the seven mut non-synonymous mutations, three were uh, deleterious and four were neutral to the protein. The, this table shows, shows the physical chemical property of the helicase protein or the NSP13 protein, where we can see that helicase is approximately 66 kDa protein with 600 amino acids and theoretical PI of 8.66. There are different amino acid compositions like uh, uh, the positive and the negative charged amino acids. These are shown in the table. The phylogenetic study analysis using MEGA showed that the, all the Indian isolates are found on different subtree of the uh, of this phylogenetic tree as compared to the Wuhan type virus, which shows its dissimilarity in the NSP13 sequence with that of the Wuhan type isolate. So the hydrophobic uh, in the plot, hydropathy plot showed that the C terminal this, uh, end was more hydrophobic as compared to the N terminal of this protein. This uh, next figure shows the <clears throat> secondary structure prediction of both the Y type and the mutated protein. Here we can see the mutants H164Y, G206C, and R442Q has impact on the secondary structure. Hence, there was alteration in the number of alpha helix, beta sheet, and terms, while the rest of the proteins did not show such alteration in the secondary structure. The 3D analysis shows the alteration in the 3D structure, that is the folding of the protein upon mutation uh, with respect to the wild type protein. The Ramachandran plot analysis showed that 89% of amino acid residues were found in the um, <clears throat> favored region of the plot and rest is in the outlier region. The protein dynamic study was uh, done to check whether what impact this mutation is putting on the NSP13 protein, that is whether it is causing flexibility or rigidification. But it was found that all the mutations, they cause rigidification in the uh, structure of the NSP13 protein, which is indicated by the blue color. Here is the uh, energy studies. Here we can see that um, the mutations, the, uh, here you can see the impact of mutation on the entropy and free energy of helicase protein. The H164C mutant showed highest uh, free energy change, hence the most stable protein, followed by F499L. Most flexible pro mutant protein amongst all was H245R with delta, uh, with delta S of minus 1.73 kilocal per mole per kV. Atomic fluctuations also showed similar result, that is the protein is gaining rigidification upon uh, mutation. 
<clears throat> the, the mutation in the NSP13 uh, protein not only impacted its structure and dynamics, but, uh, but also altered its interaction with the neighboring molecules. In this figure, we can see that upon mutation, the, the interaction of the NSP3, but for NS, NSP13 protein is hampered or altered, and due to which the interactions like hydrophobic interaction, hydrogen bond, ionic interactions were hindered by mutation. Now let's come, uh, come to the interesting part, that is how this NSP13 can be used as a suitable vaccine target for developing a vaccine against coronavirus. So the immune informatics study uh, identified 14 B cell epitopes in the NSP13 region, followed by five T cell epitopes. And this T cell epitopes had different uh, affinity with binding with the HLA allele of human beings. This is the MSC1 uh, cluster analysis, which shows how this uh, uh, HLA allele, the epitopes of the helicase protein has affinity for the HLA alleles. The red region shows the strong interaction, whereas the uh, yellow region shows weak interactions. But here we can find that there are many epitopic regions in the NSP13 helicase uh, protein, which can be used as a which has a binding affinity for HLA allele, so we can use it as a vaccine candidate. <clears throat> this is the class one immunogenicity, which also shows that yes, this protein has the capability to uh, in, uh, show class one immunogenicity. Overall, we can say that NSP13 has a, is a non-allergenic and highly antigenic protein, making it a potent vaccine target. So the following conclusions were made from this study, that is, 51 point mutations were detected in the NSP13 region of Indian SARS-CoV-2 isolates. I mean, these seven showed structural, functional, and stability uh, impact on the dynamics of the <clears throat> NSP13 protein and also impacted its interaction. 14 B cell and 5 T cell epitopes were predicted, which showed the <clears throat> uh, which showed that it is highly antigenic and also it is non-allergenic to human beings. So these were the uh, papers which uh, related to this, not this work, but, but it is NSP12 and uh, NSP5, which I published in uh, Journals of Repute. So these are some of the references. So thank you all. Thank you so much, Dr. Niti. It was a very relevant topic for research. Thank you, Mutation and confirmational changes in the SARS-CoV-2 are the major challenges in the development of vaccine against this virus. So very good piece of work. Now, may I ask the audience if they have any questions? The participants? Anyone wants to ask something? So since there are no questions, we'll proceed. Okay, thank you, ma'am. So, thank you, Niti. Now I request Dr. Ashish Kumar to present his paper. Dr. Yes. Ashish Kumar. Yes, ma'am. Is, is my voice is audible? Uh, you are audible, but your screen is not visible. Uh, now. Is the screen visible, ma'am? Yes, now it is visible. Okay. So very good afternoon to one and all present here. The topic of my presentation is in vitro dissolution of urinary stone with hydroxy acid, amino acid, and natural plant, plant extract. We know that urolopiasis is a medical term used to describe the stone occurring in the urinary tract. The urinary tract consists of the kidney, ureter, bladder, and ureter, as shown in the slide. The kidney stone is formed within the within this part, as, so, as in the second slide shows the kidney stone. Now, all human urinary tracts consist of various uh, uh, various sub uh, organic uh, organic substances, which is called the matrix. Now, these will combine with the calcium ion and forms the stone. So, there are different kinds of kidney stones which are of the different size and chemical compositions. Some of them are calcium oxalate stone, phosphate stones, uric acid stone, sterbite stone, staghorn stone, cysteine stone. The next slide will show the different types of the stones which is formed in our body. Some are the acidic stone and some are the basic stones. 
the acidic stone like the uric acid, basic stone like uh, sodium, uh, magnesium, ammonium phosphate can be formed within the body. Now, normally, why this one? The question is why this stone form? And why the, every person is not suffering from this stone, urolithiasis? Normally, our urine contains the chemicals that, that prevents that prevents the crystals from forming the stones. These inhibitors do not seem to work for everyone. However, people form the stone. Present day, present day, remedy is a surgical method or sound wave therapy. The treat, this treatment is highly expensive and the recurrence of the stone owing to its side effect. Surgical removal of the stone only gives the temporary relief and the patient because of the recurrence, recurrence is, at, is about 85% over the next period of next 15 years. Just a minute. The formation of urinary stone is a function of several factors operating in the urinary tracts. Three most important factors are the level of calculogenetic crystallites in the urine, the level of inhibitors of the calculogenesis, and the availability of the needles or the matrix in the urinary tracts. A misbalance between the first two with the crystallite dominating would indicate the state of formation of urinary uh, stone in the urinary tracts. The nature of chemical bonds between the inhibitors and the crystallite, the stability of the resultant compound as compared to a lattice energy of the crystal formation and the various physical and chemical forces operating in the stone would be the overall deciding factor in calculogenesis. In fact, crystal growth is a very complex process since both the surface area and the supersaturation varies continuously throughout the period of growth. Inhibitors of the crystallization would interfere in the ever process by sequestering this ion, which it forms the insoluble precipitate by combining with the opposite ion. The process of sequestration might involve a simple bond combinations or a complex combinations, which would, uh, would be the most effective in inhibiting the mineralizations of the insoluble salt. An ideal inhibitors must be an ideal sequestering agent under a given environment. A sequestering agent, as I say, is a, is a substance exhibiting a complexing ions, which is sufficiently strong to dissolve a common precipitate of the metal being complexed. It means the complexing ability of the sequestering agent must be compared with the insolubility of the precipitate being sequestered. If the value of the free metal line is lower for the complex than for the precipitate, the precipitate will, of course, dissolve so that the complexing agent is then a sequestering under a under the given experimental conditions. In urolithiasis, it is the calcium ion that forms stubborn, insoluble minerals, and an effective inhibitor must be a good complexing or sequestering agent. Keeping all these factors in our mind, I have endeavored the possibilities applications of hydroxy and amino acid. Now, what the question is why I selected the hydroxy and amino acid? Because it is inexpensive, easily available, and does not report it any side effect. These insoluble compounds, when react with physiological non-toxic natural occurring compounds, may undergo non-replacement type of uh, type of chemical reactions to the fall to the formation of soluble complexes. Such studies will be helpful in drug designing for partial dissolutions of urinary stones. So my objective is to first find the inhibitor efficiency of hydroxy and ammonia acid, and then Find with the dissolution of renal stone, renal stone by the Kurthi dal. Now, for that, I have prepared the two models. One is called the SDM, that is simul simultaneous dynamic model, and second is RDM, reservoir dynamic model. In SDM, three burates of 50 ml was put up. Two burate comprises crystallite forming sol salt solutions, and the third one consisting of the inhibitors. The, the above experiment is, is conducted on a magnetic sterile. The three burets are allowed to fall in a beaker on a magnetic sterile simultaneously until the whole 50 ml tumbles. The above 
the above precipitate is is um, is the in the beaker was heated in the water bath for about 10 minutes and then filtered and then the weight of the precipitate was determined similar method done with the rdm met rdm method but in this case that 50 ml of the inhibitors was initially taken over the magnetic strip the same experiment was done with the blank set of experiment instead of inhibitors we take the distilled water in the both the cases and then after calculating the experimental data and the blank set we by using the formula percentage efficiency that is weight of blank set minus experimental set upon the weight of blank set into 100 we can determine the percentage efficiency so this is this slide shows the experimental work done in the lab now second the natural extract for the horse gray gram extract was prepared for that about a known amount of 250 gram of the horse gram was taken in a 500 ml water and left for overnight its extract was prepared with the help of scl and then it was again heated and cooled and then the, it is dipped, it is put in a known amount of calcium carbonate and calcium oxalate of definite of known strength 0.1 and 0.01 strength i have taken then it is again left for some duration, so 48 hours, and then it was again filtered and the weight of the precipitate was determined. This is the observation table. First table so is the blank with the water, second with the amino acid, glycine, and third is the hydrox second, uh, hydroxy acid of different strength. First table, one is 0.1 M strength, whereas the second table is 0.01 strength of calcium carbonate. <laughs> we just see the RDA model is more effective than the SDA model. The efficiency of RDM model is higher as compared to, to SDM model. Similar experiment with the other salt, calcium oxalate was done with the water, glycine, and tartaric acid. Hausgram extract was also done with the different strength of calcium carbonate and calcium oxalate, and the percentage dissolution was calculated. The graph shows the similar the, the data of the which you obtain in the uh, there the glycine and tartaric acids, then is the different 0.01 strength of calcium carbonate, again with the SDM model of calcium oxalate, then calcium 0.01 strength, different strength in both the models were plotted. Similarly, with the Hausgram extract graph of the calcium carbonate in oxalate of different strength was plotted. Now, can come to the conclusion part. It is clear from the experiment that these hydroxy acid and amino acid or the osgram has a power to dissolve to, to dissolve the, the, the kidney stone that is oxalate and carbonate. I work with the oxalate and carbonate. Second, the RDM model is more effective than the SDM model. And on increasing the strength of the inhibitor solution, its inhibitor efficiency increases. Hosgram is a good inhibitor for dissolution of kidney stone. Glycine is more effective than the tartaric acids. So that is, the comparative study of the table suggests that these acids are moderate to good inhibitors of the calcium carbonate and oxalate mineralizations. Sequestrations of these insoluble calcium salt by, by these acids might be due to the complexation, which is effective because due to the. Just a minute. Ex, 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 complexation coupled with the effective hydrogen bonding to the OH bonding. A comparative study of different models shows that RDA model is most effective in the, in, in the inhibitions of the mineralization. This is because the continuous studying might be effective, might be effective chelating the calcium ion and is screening from the precipitating ions like oxalate or carbon. My work is over, but there's a question that can we recognize, know that we are we have a chance of forming a stone or a person is feeling person have a stone on them. There are some symptoms through which we can easily identify that you may have a chance of a stone either in the kidney or in the world. Pain is pain. Initially, you feel the pain, which which starts which with which stand for at least for some few minutes, and then it disappears. Nausea and the vomiting is uh, another, uh, uh, you may occur, blood may be passing in the urine, 
burning sensation during urination can be occur. If you feel like that, then it is time to consult the doctor and then it will diagnosis on the basis of the history, history, physical examination, urinary analysis, radiographic studies. Doctor may ask the blood test, urine test, CT scan, X-ray, and these are the tests to identify whether you are suffering from the urinary cases or not. But if if for, for this is advice, excuse me, Doctor Ashish, please that, conclude. And that you, so in teachers, this is way to prevent most use avoid using the salt or sodium intake we try to avoid intake of animal proteins like meat fish etc try to avoid the vegetable the vegetables which contains the oxalates we have to try to avoid the chocolates soya products etc water always i just told you that we have to take at least eight eight, eight glass of water a day dates okra these are the because it contains some magnesium, it's antioxidant property and prevents the crystallization chemicals in the kidney. Pomegranate juice is also helpful because it is rich in, rich in fiber, vitamin B, vitamin C, potassium, potassium present in it. It prevents the formation of stone in the kidney. Lemon juice is also helpful because it is an antioxidant rich in citrate, citrate and it helps in the, uh, in the formation of it, it, it reduces the formation of the spore. Apple cider uh, vinegar. Excuse me, Dr. Rashish, please conclude. Yes, 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 yes. I'm just I'm concluding. So this is my last slide. So it is the data that up to 15% of men and 6% of the women will develop a stone. Maybe chance. So men have less chance of formation of the stone as compared to them. So thank you. Lifestyle. So we have to change the lifestyle by using thank you thank you thank you thank you dr thank you, ashish for this informative piece of work thank you ma'am so may i know why did you choose hydroxy acid that is tartaric acid for your experiment uh, to dissolve the, the kidney reason stones? is that uh, this is because ma'am we, we select the hydroxy acid tartaric acid is the hydroxy acid because it is easily available and it is non toxic and does not have any reported side effects. So according to you, we should use more of the tartaric acid containing food substances to yes, prevent yes, the yes. formation you have to of... Use, but you can't use the more of... But you try to use the more foods in our day-to-day -day life. That will Thank help you so much. In the Thank you. It will prevent some measures. So you. any questions from the audience or participants? So there are no questions. Thank you, Ashish. Thank you, ma'am. Now we move to the last presentation of this session. I request Ms. Pooja Kumari to present her paper. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Pooja Kumari. Yes, namaste, ma'am. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, ma'am. You can share your screen, Pooja. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Ma'am, ho nahi paare screen se aur. Aap mobile se kar rahi hain? Yes, ma'am. कोई है आपके अगल बगल जिससे आप पूछ सकते हैं नहीं मैं ऐसे तो नहीं मैं कर रही हूं कोशिश हो नहीं पा रहे शेयर शेयर का तो ऑप्शन आ रहा है लेकिन इसमें शेयर हो नहीं पा रहे स्क्रीन स्टार्ट नाउ
मैम ऐसा कोई नंबर हो तो बोलिए मैं सेंड कर देती हूँ पीपीटी मुझसे तो नहीं हो पा रहे शेयर मैम तो आप अपना बोल के प्रेजेंटेशन दे लीजिए ओके मैम थैंक यू मैम नमस्ते माय सेल्फ पूजा कुमारी अपना स्क्रीन ऑन कर लीजिए यस यस मैम यस माई सेल्फ पूजा कुमारी रिसर्च स्कॉलर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री मंगलायतन यूनिवर्सिटी अलीगढ़ यूपी टू ऑल मेंबर्स पार्टिसिपेंट्स एंड लिसनर्स वेरी थैंकफुल टू टीम रिसर्च रिसर्च कमिटी एंड ऑल्सो थैंक्स टू पटना वीमेंस कॉलेज ऑर्गेनाइज इंटरनेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कंप्यूटर एप्लीकेशन पटना यूनिवर्सिटी आई आई ऑल्सो i also thanks to respected sorry i i also the supervisor dr hari sarswat sir department of chemistry mangalayatan university up and also thanks to respected co supervisor sir dr s sekhar sir department of chemistry jayaprakash university chhapra bihar my respect my respective research title is a study on characterization on chemistry and biological approach of amidazole derivatives and my research paper and presentation topic characterization uh, characterization and study of amidazole with uh, some chemical compound and antifungal drug amid amidazole any of a class of organic compounds of the heterocyclic series characterized by a ring structure composed of three carbon atoms and uh, Two nitrogen atoms at a non-dagent position. The simplest number of the amidazole family in amidazole itself, a compound with molecular formula C three H four N two. In production and core areas, amidazole was first prepared in eighteen thousand fifty eight. Other amidazole compounds have been non amy non longer. no longer elintine and parabenic acid were prepared in 18037 from uric acid the amino acid histidine and the its decomposition product hist mine have the amidazole structure as does biotin a growth factor for humans and yeast chemical compound furan is a heterocyclic click organic compound that my class of organic compounds of the heterocyclic atomic series characterized by a ring structure composed of one oxygen atom and four carbon atoms the simplest number of the furan family if furan itself a colorless volatile and somewhat toxic liquid toxic liquid uh, that boils at 31.36 degree it is usually converted by hydro hydrogenation hexa hexamethylene diamine the raw materials for uh, several other members of the furan family are uh, produced on a large uh, large scale for use as solvents and chemical raw materials antifungal drug any substance that acts selectively against a fungal pathogen in the treatment of fungal infection the major groups of antifungals are the polens the azoles and the elimine these groups are primarily by chemical structure and mechanism of action important drugs that do not fall within these groups but the uh, that are used in the treatment of fungal infections include the drisiofluin and fluoxetine thank you ma'am so thank you pooja kumari ji namaste ma'am नमस्ते तो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर योर इंफॉर्मेशन रिगार्डिंग इमिडाजोल
So now we have come to the end of this session. Thank you, ma'am, for your uh, insightful words. So I would now request you to kindly give the closing remarks of the. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, also uh, co supervisor for this uh, research paper to Pooja Kumari. Please uh, give me order for some presentation to a related topic. So if you want to present, you can present because Pooja was not able to present or uh, share her screen. Uh, actually, uh, ma'am, uh, I am too, too late for discussions for connecting his uh, technical problem. So I'm really extremely sorry for that um, guidance. So next time I will promise to all of your team, this is a... So if you want uh, to present, you can proceed. Uh, yes, ma'am, I Aap, want to... Your present. presentation is ready, which Pooja Kumari presented. Yes, ma'am. Do you want to present? Yes, ma'am. How long will you do it? One to two minutes, ma'am. It will be two minutes to two minutes. आपको पहले से रेडी रहना चाहिए था प्लीज हां एक्चुअली मैम थोड़ा इसमें मैम मैं एक बार पूछा था कि स्क्रीन शेयर का जो प्रॉब्लम आता है तो उनको कोई नंबर अगर दे सके वो लोग तो फिर फिर उन लोगों ने तो थोड़ा सा पहले होता है ना अभी लास्ट आवर्स में अभी हम किसका नंबर आपको देंगे अभी तो मेरे पास पीपीटीज है पड़ा हुआ तो मैम कोई अगर व्हाट्सएप नंबर हो तो प्लीज प्रोवाइड मी मैम शॉर्टली वन सेकंड प्लीज अगर हो मैम कोई व्हाट्सएप नंबर तो थोड़ा दिया जाए तो ऐसा है सर हाँ मैम कि अभी छोड़ दिया जाए क्योंकि हम लोग शॉर्ट ऑफ टाइम है हम लोग अभी टाइम ऑफ हो गया है मैम मैं थोड़ा सा सिर्फ इसमें कंक्लूजन एंड रिजल्ट और केमिकल जो यूज है वो मैं बता देना चाहता हूँ ताकि हम लोग का ये ज्वाइंट पेपर पब्लिश होने वाला है मैम आपके यहाँ और ये नेसेसरी है मेरे अकॉर्डिंग तो प्लीज अलाउ मी फॉर फ्यू मिनट्स टाइम मैम ओनली जस्ट ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड एंटी फॉन्गल ड्रग इज इम्पोर्टेंट कर लीजिए बोल लीजिए ओके मैम Uh, okay, thank you to uh, my judges for allow few minutes for presentation to my uh, scholar and supervisor. So today topic uh, is uh, characterization and the study of imidazole with some chemical compound and antifungal drug. This is a very interesting and uh, elaborated and useful topic and research matter for chemical science and alliance subject and allied subject this is a uh, imidazole is any of a class of organic compounds of the histocyclic series characterized by a ring structure composed of three carbon atoms and two nitrogen atoms at non adjacent positions this is the nuclear formula of c3h4n2 and uh, introduction of this core area in the some history and uh, related point imidazole was first prepared in the 1858 it is the that's all of um, uh, history and uh, it is the chemical compound for useful in the research matter the furan is the histocyclic organic compound that uh, base of chemical system in the organic compound of histocyclic aromatic series characterized by a ring structure composed of one oxygen atom and four carbon atom that's all and antifungal drug in the compound for four type of antifungal drug the polynes the azoles the alamines and other antifungal drug the first uh, first of the antifungal drug the polynes such as amphot amphotericin b and nestrerin and second the azoles 
the azoles antifungal agents which are further divided into the imidazole and trizole according to the number of nitrogen molecule in other organic ring structure and third the alamines the alamines terbinafine and naphtifine the synthetic antifungal agent that are effective in the uh, topical and oral treatment ye jo hamara uh, oral treatment ke kaam ज्यादा यूजफुल और इसके प्रोडक्शंस मेडिसिन में इसके हम इस्तेमाल कर सकते हैं और इसका जो हमारा फीडबैक होता है वो वो पॉजिटिव आता है डी मेटा फाइट्स अदर एंटीफंगल ड्रग में इसका हम यूज करते हैं ग्रेस फॉलविन एंड इज गिवन ओरली फॉर द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ सेवरल सुपर सुपरफेसियल फंगल इन्फेक्शन ऑफ द स्किन हमारे ऑर्गन्स और स्किन के जो uh, एंटीफंगल ट्रीटमेंट होते हैं उसके बिहाफ में हम इसका इस्तेमाल करते हैं और इसके जो इम्पोर्टेंट पॉइंट हैं वो कम्पोज डेराइवेटिव हिस्टोसाइक्लिक सीरीज एंड नॉन एडजस्टेंट पोजिशन एंड पैराबेनिक एसिड मैंने सारे पेपर्स रेडी कर चुक कर चुके हैं हम लोग और टीम को मैंने फॉरवर्ड भी कर दिया है तो ऐसा है कि एक्सेप्ट होगा और अगर कोई प्रॉब्लम आती है तो मैं उस पर भी रिव्यू करूँगा मैम सो Uh, thank you for giving an important time for your part time in today conference so that's all ma'am i completed to my uh, topic so thank you so much sudhanshu sekhar ji for your presentation yes ma'am yes, ma thank you and adding to the first presentation by ms pooja kumari okay ma'am thank you well ma'am thank you ma'am ma for your insightful words and valuable remarks so i would now request you to kindly give the closing remarks of today's technical session thank you sushmita so all together 11 papers were presented in this session all were very good and well presented the researchers have done their work with sense of adding some information which are relevant to the present scenario this technical session will certainly help in empowering smart future through these scientific developments and technologies I thank all the participants and wish them a very bright future. I thank Dr. Bhavna Sinha and her team for organizing this international conference and providing this virtual platform to such innovative ideas. Once again, I thank all of you. So thank you. Good day. On behalf of the organizing committee, Patna Women's College, I am Shushmita Chakravarti, Assistant Professor, Department of MCA. take the opportunity to deliver the vote of thanks i extend my sincere gratitude to dr shubha shivaka head department of zoology patna women's college for taking out time from the hectic schedule and chairing the second day in technical session thank you ma'am thank you to all the paper presenters for their brilliant presentation uh, i also extend my thanks to all the participants for their patience hearing and gracious presence before we end the session uh, i would request all the participants to switch on their cameras so that we can have a group photograph okay with this we end with today's session uh, thank you once again to all have a nice day you all are requested to leave the meeting thank you once again have a nice day